Hello all, welcome to Emacs Conf 2021. I'm Tom Gillespie. Thank you to the organizers for all your hard work and for inviting me to give this short talk on org as an executable format. The links to the talk page, the GitHub page for the project, and the package on Melpa are listed on the right. Let's start with one of the motivating use cases for executable org files. Many users keep global configuration for org in an init.l file, which works for many workflows. However, for reproducible research, this is a challenge because if an org file is dissociated from the init.l file, then often it will no longer function as expected. One potential solution to this problem is to be able to include all of the global configuration for Emacs and the environment in the org file itself, in which case when you go to reuse the org file, it will work as expected. What does an executable org file look like in action? Here's a demo of an executable org file running in bash, dash, zish, and PowerShell. So we are currently in bash, and we can run our demo. And we'll print some stuff and wait for input. We can also run it in dash, which is the default for Debian and derivatives. Um, same program, works as expected, zish also, and lastly PowerShell. If we try to run demo.org itself, we see we get an error because PowerShell cares about file extensions. So if we symlink to PS1, then it works as expected, and there are ways to alias this so that you can run it as a program without the PS1 extension. So how does this work? There are three components to an executable org file that all need to be present in order for this to work. Starting from the top of the file, we have a shebang block. Next, we have an org babel block written in Emacs Lisp, which is at what we actually saw executing. And then there are some eval local variables or elves that are involved in making this actually executable. So let's start with the shebang block. Org syntax does not have support for shebang lines. Uh, however, it supports the shebang block. This is because org comments, blocks, keywords, etc., that start with the sharp sign have the same syntax as comments in POSIX and PowerShell. This block is in fact valid bash, dash, zish, PowerShell, and, and maybe some other shells as well. And in essence, what it does is perform some setup to avoid polluting standard output, and then it runs Emacs to load the file itself. The elisp that is passed on the command line is explicated over here on the right. And in essence, what it does is to keep the startup time minimal and as low as possible, it loads the absolute bare minimum needed for Babel, and then it calls hack local variables, triggering the eval local variables. What do the eval local variables do, and how do those work? The essence of the approach is to use org confirm Babel evaluate to allow Babel execution. We can't set it to nil because that is an arbitrary code execution vector, which we don't want if we're sharing files. Instead, what we do is we use the fact that it can be a function and we normalize the block of code. We check sum it and then we check that it matches this check sum up here at the top of the file. And then sort of inside there, inside of org SBE, which is org source block evaluate, we call the block. So the actual implementation of this is somewhat more complicated. However, it is small enough to fit in the local variables at the end of the file. One thing to note is that if you are using PowerShell, PowerShell parses the whole file, which means that for any normal org content, you need to put it in a multi-line PowerShell comment and close it. So once we hit hack local variables at the end, we run the, the eval local variables block, then we enter this elisp block and you can write whatever you want. All the power of org babble is now at your fingertips in order to do what you need for this file. And it's in so finally, let's do a quick demo of how to use this to make your own org files executable. So orgstrap is available on Melpa, as mentioned. 
and it can be installed using package.l by calling package install workstrap or download and it will install. Then you can open an existing file or a new file. In this case, we're going to open a file called example.org. And then orgstrap provides a command called orgstrap init. And what orgstrap init does is it populates a file with the machinery needed to run an orgstrap block. We're just going to do a message orgstrap, or orgstrap. And if you look up at the top, you will see that the orgstrap block checksum will change when I save the file. This makes it much easier to author files with orgstrap blocks. And then we need one last piece of machinery, uh, which is the shebang block. I am just going to steal the shebang block from this other file over here. Since it is available, you can also get it from shebang.org, and I have plans to add a command to insert this into the file directly, which may actually be done in, uh, by the time this video is actually posted and, and visible. There's one last step, which is that we need to run DIRD in order to, there we go. So we use shift M, a capital M, in order to make our example file executable. And then if we come back to here, we see that example.org is now executable and we can run it. Hello, orchestrap, and we're done. So that's the basic workflow for getting orgstrap files to be executable. I will be around to answer questions live, and I will be also available in the Emacs Comp IRC channel all day. I hope you have found this useful, and thank you very much for watching.